Uh, you're on video now. I believe you are anyway. And uh, I know you uh, used to have a commercial uh, fishing license. And uh, uh, why don't you uh, just tell us about it? Yes, I'd be uh, very happy. Uh, uh, I'm Rudy Mueller from the state of Washington. I'm not famous and I've never been on video or television or anything, but I'm happy to accommodate my friend Tom Nargi. I uh, came to Everett Bush in 1959 and um, I was me. I've always lived inland, but I was immediately attracted to the salt water of Puget Sound. And so I at once looked around for a job on the fishing boat. I was going to college at the time and I wanted a part-time job on the fishing boat. I wasn't lucky the first year, so I had to go to work for Scott Paper Company, a large uh, paper plant in uh, Everett, Washington, as a janitor, part-time janitor, and handling paper machines. Uh, but luckily the next year I got a job on a Persane boat in Everett, Washington. Uh, and by the way, I'm going to digress a minute and tell you and warn you, I was at a funeral service just the other day and one of the speakers warned that one should not speak too long. So I'm going to keep this short because if you speak more than eight minutes, um, you get into a dangerous zone and if it's 14 minutes, the congregation falls asleep. And I don't want you to fall asleep before this wonderful meal. But <clears throat> So I'll keep it under eight minutes to be on the safe side. So back to uh, my commercial fishing. So then in Puget Sound, the Persane boats usually have a crew, a crew of six to seven crew members. And particularly those are what they call the block saners. And um, they have a block and the net comes in over the block and comes down onto the deck and the fish are collected at the end of a net in an area of the net which is called the bunt. And if uh, it's a large catch and there's so many fish in there that if you were to pull up the bunt onto the deck it would probably tear and the fish would all escape. So. Uh, then we would have to use a brailer. A brailer is a basket type of, uh, with a long handle on it. It's hooked to a, an overhead crane, and you dip it into the net and pull out the fish, usually several hundred at a time. We fished mostly for um, uh, salmon, and it was uh, early out uh, silver salmon, and then later in the season, pink salmon, and in between. July, August sockeye salmon uh, that went into the Fraser River up in Canada in the Vancouver area. Uh, large runs. That is uh, was the purse seining, and I uh, fished on those boats for about Excuse four, me? about four or five years. And also one year we fished up in Southeast Alaska, which was very interesting, and exciting. We were fishing all over southeast Alaska and it was indeed um, a very wonderful experience. Uh, it's very hot sir so be careful. Go on Rudy, don't we be to are, divert it. Uh, no I'm not. Uh, uh, after that I also fish. Excuse oh, me, may oh, I get you anything you. else right now? Okay. Uh, Yankee pot roast, finish. right? I'm having Yankee pot roast here. In, uh, uh, a wonderfully decorated plate with uh, delicious looking pot roast, beans, and mashed potatoes. This is at the Wayside Inn, and uh, what is that? That's a shrimp salad, I guess. Uh, and that's some kind of pasta. Butternut ravioli. Butternut ravioli, and I have lobster mac and cheese, which um, is when Rudy is, um, I think Rudy is about Four minutes into his eight minutes, but uh, go on, Rudy. First uh, inning, um, usually a crew of uh, seven, six to seven, unless they fish with what's called a drum saner. Drum saner is more automatic and reels up the, um, the, the net on a uh, big drum. It's not handled by the fishermen by hand. Anyone else? It's, 
uh, it's more automatic and saves manpower. I then, Tom, uh, went into, I wanted to be a boat owner, so I bought a gillnet boat and went into the gillnet fisheries first for three years in Bristol Bay, Alaska. In the 1970s, 75 to 78, the fishing in Bristol Bay was not the greatest because the uh, sockeye up there had been somewhat uh, diminished or depleted by overfishing and lack of regulation. Did you take your boat from Everett? No, you sail it up? I bought it up there and maintained it for three years. And the uh, regulations tightened up then and they uh, bought back from the fishermen a lot of the licenses and the licenses were very difficult to get and went up in price from about $15,000 to $150,000 in the early 80s. And so when it was, uh, they were up in the $70,000 range, I sold my license and uh, we used part of that money to build a house. But then the gillnet fish is also heavily uh, used in the state of Washington. And again, it's a license system, but I was able to get a license, to buy a license. And so I bought a boat, a 32 foot boat in uh, the state of Washington and started fishing for gillnets. This was all part-time work and the um, salmon fishery was somewhat limited, but we fished for silvers, sockeye, and later on in the fall for chum salmon. Those were the most, and of course the pink salmon also, the humpies. Yeah, now oh. the chum salmon, uh, was there much of a market for the chums? Or? Uh, if they were nice and fresh, uh, if they had not been in fresh water very long or not at all, then uh, the price was very lucrative. But if they had gotten into fresh water, then they turned its color quite badly. I, I'm and familiar with that. The, I've uh, caught a few chumps. The texture meat changes and yes. also, and then the price goes way, way down. It's almost that uh, fishermen give the fish away because they can't sell it at that, at that point. These and are chums about for the Skagit River, probably. Mostly Skagit River, and also some uh, went up the Snohomish River. The Snohomish, okay. Yes, yeah. uh, well, and uh, I did this on a part-time uh, basis more. Uh, we had to travel usually a full day to get to the fishing grounds, mostly up in the San Juan Islands or Bellingham area or around Point Roberts on the Canadian border. And in, to get up there from Everett, it was usually about a seven to 12 hour run. And then they would give us only about six hours, eight hours or 12 hours to fish. And the fishing was pretty scarce at that time. And we only caught sometimes 30 fish, sometimes a couple hundred fish. But it wasn't like in the olden days where you caught fish by the thousands, actually, even on a gillnet boat. And uh, the gillnetting is a straight gillnet, a net that's stretched out up to 1,800 feet and 300 feet deep, usually. And um, uh, basically, you're supposed to keep it in a straight line, which is very difficult. And the salmon swim into the net and get caught around the gills and then